On the phone line right now, Kendra McMillan, who is a uh, senior policy advisor for nursing practice and work environment with the American Nurses Association. Kendra is also a registered nurse with a master's degree in public health. And, of course, uh, she focuses on outpatient community-based care. Good morning, Kendra. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fine. Of course, um, it's not news that, of course, African-Americans are disproportionately being affected by COVID-19 at an alarming rate. Um, I don't need to go over the stats with you. And they're saying one of the biggest killers is hypertension, which I think a lot of folks don't realize that they're suffering from, correct? Yes, yes. And, you know, I'm so thankful that you brought this topic up because it is uh, COVID-19 is hitting our community at a disproportionately high rate. And, you know, this is nationwide. And, you know, we're seeing that hypertension and diabetes are, you know, two comorbidities, two diagnoses that we're seeing in patients that, you know, are being hit the hardest. But we also have to look at other underlying health conditions, such as, um, you know, there's obesity, but also we have to consider smoking. So one might not be hypertensive, one might not be obese, one might not have diabetes, but if you smoke, your risk is higher too. But they they have some treatments, if they know that going in, okay, you're a smoker, uh, I can see that you're obese, do they have treatments that can help mitigate, the, to let somebody's immune system fight this thing? Right. So, you know, with underlying health conditions and with other diagnoses, the key is making sure it's managed and maintained. And it's important, though, to acknowledge that that isn't always easy when we look at access to health care and access to a primary care provider access to affordable medications. There are so many systemic issues that we're dealing with that have served as longstanding barriers to being able to maintain one's health. And now we have COVID-19 that has hit nationwide, but particularly is hitting our community very hard. Uh, And so, mm -hmm. and then there's access to testing issues that we're still dealing with. Yeah, and they keep telling us that we have tests, and everybody knows that that is just not true. Bad time to be lying to the medical community right. and the American people. Uh, the state of Georgia is going to open up certain businesses that African Americans frequent. Do you think this is mm-hmm. too soon? Yes, too soon, too soon. We're finally at a point where we are seeing that physical distancing is working. But we're also at a point where... The majority of people within the U.S. are not immune to COVID-19. We haven't identified, you know, uh, treatment. We we can treat symptoms, yes. But there is not a treatment that we can say, yes, this is the the, the key that is going to help someone get well. And we don't have a vaccine. Right. And so to begin to open businesses right now that we frequent, Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've heard about barbershops. I've heard about salons. Yeah. Um, There's you know, no way to practice concerning. social distancing in that situation. Oh, well, only they're letting two people in at a time. It takes one right. person. One, one person. person can infect everybody standing in line. It's that contagious. On, on, on a lighter note, there is some promising treatments that they have out there that they're testing. I understand we're supposed to be getting some of the results from the testing that they've been doing in the beginning of May. Have you been hearing that? Yes. So, you know, there are multiple drugs right now that are currently under uh, research. So we have medications that are antivirals that have been used for for other elements. And then we also have um, some, you know, immune, um, some uh, immune based therapies that they've been considering that have also been used for, for other diagnoses. So the research is happening and researchers are working aggressively to try to find a treatment for COVID-19. It's just, you know, a a matter of time. Clinical trials, they take time. And we have to look at whether or not the medication is safe, but also effective. Um, The the people that are in dire straits, do they have a right to sign off and say, hey, give it to me? Mm, You know, there are some ethical implications with that. You know, what one chooses to do personally, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's hard to speak to that. But, you know, as a medical professional, it is our duty 
to make sure that what it is, you know, we educate about and what it is that we're promoting is safe. All right. Once again, I thank you, Kendra. But I want everybody to text thanks to two zero two 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 to make a ten dollar donation for our nurses, our doctors, our frontline workers. We would really appreciate it. And Kendra, I, we'll talk next week if that's cool with you. I really appreciate yeah. you taking the time to disseminate this information. Sounds great. Thank you so much. All right. Take care now. Bye bye. Thank you. You too.